guess you like a lot of these girls over here. Well, oh, Shane, huh? Oh, uh, Eli, as I was standing on the, by the front door, I realized how short I am. So, Eli, you guys grew taller, or I got shorter. I feel like I'm 5'7, five, I'm five, I feel like I'm 5'3. But, uh, I'll start. I said, well, I, 
I kind of cringe when I figure, well, he didn't squeal on me when we were young, so. <laughs> but you know, um, we're shaped by the way we grow up. And for me, as I was, as a young adult, and growing, being an entrepreneur, and building businesses, ultimate, and, and making contributions to the community, ultimately, uh, growing up, is the solutions that I had came from the things that I just talked to you about. And I know many of you come from very similar circumstances, but I, you know, I think ever since white, our time, they didn't have white year high school, they only Hilo high school. So um, anyway, so the, when it came down to issues of homelessness, and people talked about homeless shelter. Uh, uh, I looked at the, uh, my plantation upbringing as a solution to homelessness. So I believe that homelessness is not about shelter, but it's about building community. And by and large, there was, I got criticism for that, mostly from, from, from everything else. So uh, when when I started this thing called Kahawiki Village, we ended up with 144 homes. And if you look at the community, it really mimics a plantation town. It has a country store, the Palama Market, it has a post office, child care center, preschool, uh, recreation center, study center. And the entire project is powered by the sun. So it's it's the only community still in this entire world that's um, fully off the grid. And I don't understand why other places in the world hasn't uh, mimicked what we've done. So, uh, when we started the project, we did it in two phases. The first, the first phase was 30 homes because we wanted to make sure that we could build community, like we said, that we could, and the remaining 114 homes we built later. So, on the day that 30 families were receiving their keys, there were children and, and moms and dads waiting for the keys, and I, I saw this boy, and I instinctively reached out to him and said, oh, come to uncle. So I reached out, carried him in my arms, and I looked at his eyes. myself and I saw my classmates. <laughs> and now when I look at you, I can see that I saw faces like you because now this boy has hope and a chance to dream. You know me, I, I cannot talk too good, and especially under pressure, 
um, I, I slight watch, right? The dot, the dot, the dot, the dot. So I, 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 do, I have to make sure, like, how do I, I felt like a trap, like a rat. How do I get out of this place? But there's only one word to come in and one word to go out. So I figured, okay, I'll face the music. I went and faced these television cameras to tell them about this homeless village that we're building for um, the community. And the problem is that all I had was a sheet of paper. I had nothing else. I'm not a developer. So I, I had to call the people that committed to work with me, the engineers, contractors, and, and, and the uh, consultants to tell them that this thing is going to go on the air. And you know, in Hawaii, if you do something, you better, you better do what you say you're going to do. Because at the end, people not going to remember what you did, they remember what you didn't do. So I, I called everybody and said, this is what's going to happen. And everyone chimed in and said, okay, we, we, we got to do it. We're going to do this until this project is done. So um, in, in that whole process, after I left the meeting, the architect said, wait, I hope you're not planning on paying for all of this for by yourself. And I'll, inside in my head, I thought my, to myself, I hope not either, because I didn't know how much it was going to cost. Three million, five million, eight million, twelve million, actually it ended up being twenty-two million. I had no idea where the money was going to come from. And so from day one, I started calling everybody, suppliers, contractors, roofers, and I, I just started calling everybody. And you know this town, this is probably the most generous place on earth because not one person said no. I mean, not one person said no. So, along the way, uh, my, my job, I felt, was you know, all these different experts. My job was to give people confidence that, that vision, clarity of the vision, confidence that it was going to get done. I, I told everybody, don't worry about the government, don't worry about permits, it's my bully, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about the money, I'm going to take care of it. In the meantime, I was, you know, it was a really scary and lonely time for me. Because I couldn't tell anybody, that I didn't know where all of this was going to come from. I just had this vision, I had people believe that this could be done and the money was going to be there and the government would all fall into place. So along the way I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I will die for this project. So I don't know where 2017 went. I said, I will die for this project. And I will die for this project, not for me, but for the reputation of all the people who said, I will help. For all the people who said, I will put my reputation on the line to make sure this project works. And so to be sure that I really meant what I said several times, I, over, I, I, I put myself and said, I will lie down in front of the bus, I will wait for the bus to roll over me, and that was my test, that, that I will die for all the people that work for this project. And so, you know, along the way, it's, it's amazing. I started by saying that there's magic. And the magic in this room is really you. The magic in this room is really you. And it's um, with, with will and commitment, there's magic that happens. So along the way, so one, one part of the, the, the project, there was a, uh, all the walls of the homes, of the first 30 homes were built. I told the contractor, the roof, the built vertical contractor, it's okay, we'll put on the roof. But somebody donated all of these specialized roof, but it's standing seam roof so that you could put the solar panels on them. You don't have to ever worry about the condition of the roof. And he said, hey, we, we don't know how to do the roof. You gotta go find a specialist to do it. So I went on the phone, pick, call, cold call a bunch of people and finally found somebody, they showed up one day and after one day they came up to me and said, hey Dwayne, sorry, we cannot do the job. And I'm like, God, and, and the 
contractors were all there saying, I mean, if it rains, we're going to have to take everything down and start all over again. So, Sunday, I thought, what I'm going to do? Monday, I started calling people on Tuesday. This was a Tuesday morning. I, there were four homes, on the four homes, there were roofers banging away at these, putting on these specialized roof. And I thought, geez, I don't remember a, anybody agreeing to be here to put on the roof. And then, then just, I heard, I saw this guy saying, hey, are you Dwayne Grease? And I said, oh, yes, I am. So my name is Bobby Anderson. I am, I'm here because we're driving by and I heard you needed help. So here's my foreman, here's, here's my man. I'm gonna put up as many houses as I can until I run out of money. So to me, I looked, I looked up at the sky and said, man, where did this come from? So it, this is one of the number of times I cried, I never did cry for myself, I cried out of thankfulness for the generosity of the people in this town. So I, I went around the house to see that nobody was looking and then I, I, I just bawled and I cried. And this happened a number of times before. But you know, uh, at the end, we had so many people from all around the world come and visit the project unannounced, some announced, governors, mayors, and the, the university said there's something different about this place. There's something really different about this place. And I said, you know, I, I finally called on him and said, you know, I said, what you're experiencing is the soul of Kahawiki village. And, and the, what you're experiencing is the energy the mana of all the people who put their all into making this project work. Basically, what, what I say is that what you're experiencing is a soul, Hawaii, a Hawaii soul. So, the, the foundation for this was that for other people to replicate what we did. And so I was really happy when the city of Sacramento said they wanted to replicate this village, and it was because my good friend Dusty Baker lives in Sacramento, and his brother was homeless, and so he he really pushed the city to move this thing forward. So they asked me to come up there, and I, I thought it, I went up there to put up the final touches to help them do a Kahuiki village in Sacramento. But really, it was the, the, the last meeting. They said, "You know, Dwayne, we sorry, we can't do a Kahuiki village in Sacramento." Because we don't understand the community. I want to like, like, think of that. Where has this where has this world gone? Has it deteriorated so much that people don't understand community? So I was really down for weeks. They finally I realized what they meant is that they don't understand community the way we understand community. There's some, again, like I said, there's something really special about this place. And I talked about the magic in you. You have the gift of Hawaii soul. Um, so, as I got, uh, well, maybe I should say this. So, you know, along my way, along my journey, I would ask people in different countries. New York, Chicago, or LA, or London. So where is home? You, you try ask those guys where home is. Ah, I was born here, I went there, now I live here. I said, but where? Where is home? You know, people from Hawaii, we don't have that problem. We don't have that issue. It doesn't matter where you, where, matter where you live where, now. When you ask them, where is home? They'll say Hawaii. You said more specifically, they'll say, need Hawaii. For me, if people ask me where is home, I say right here, this is my home. This is my home. And you know what? I would fight for this home. Like I hope you will too. So now that you have the you know, 
you, I know you all know you have this, this gift of holy soul. So what, what you're going to do about it? You just stay home and watch TV, so meditate. But I want to suggest two things before I end. One is will and commitment, which I just talked to you about in regards to holy soul. The, the other thing is, I think is an important thing to remember is I, 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 I believe that the biggest issue that the world faces, the biggest issue that Hawaii faces, is not COVID, is not climate change, is not homelessness, it's indifference, or not making a difference. So you know what, when you, in your crossroads in your life, it could be now, five years, ten years from now. Please remember, if you, you're taking different paths, your life makes a difference. I don't care what your circumstances are. I, I told you in an indirect way what my life was like. And maybe you're a little bit kolo hey, if you're going to do something, be your fault. But leave, a little, leave aside your color aside. You can just focus on what you do. What you do. And, and embrace your gift. The other part of making no difference. Making no difference is. You know those, all the problems that you see outside. It's not somebody else's problem. It's your problem. Somebody put rubbish on the street. It's not, it's not for somebody else to go pick up. It's you to pick up. Issue is homelessness, drugs, guns. It's your responsibility. It's not somebody else's responsibility. So I, I, I hope you can, if you remember one thing about this old man with white hair, that, you know, that remember your gift. Because you inherited this gift. This is your own. You know, one thing about the gift, I, I was, I mean, about 15 years ago, I was in New York City, I was invited to be part of this group talking about leadership. And they were like the captains of industry, captains of finance in the world. In this. And so I was, like, I was intimidated. I'm thinking, like, why am I sitting in this room with these people? And I looked at the clock, there was 15 minutes left. I said, after a while, I said, you know, I traveled 5,000 miles. I figured I'll just go say something. But you know, stuff that I just told you about, this gift, I figured, okay, I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I'm going to give my all in what I have to say about leadership. Because it's, it's about leadership with the things that I talked about about trust, kindness, friendship. Um, is giving. And I, I swear, these guys just stop. And a number of, I can see their faces, their jaws drop. Because you know what? It doesn't matter how much money people have around them. It doesn't matter how much power they have. I realize at that moment, they want what we have. They want what we have. Embrace it. So, uh, you know, on behalf of my, my classmates who I cherish, Thank you for having me here. And, uh, and our, our class last year gave, uh, I, we created an endowment. I don't know who was in trouble. <laughs> Catherine, you, you chuck. <laughs> gave a $1,000 scholarship to somebody that goes to UH Hilo, and then there will be another $1,000 scholarship for a um, student that goes to UH Hilo this year. So, uh, on, on behalf of that, that class, I, I will personally give like, like five more of those, like, so $5,000 scholarship. So it's not only for UH Hilo, but I, sorry guys, but even if you go to Hawaii Community College, UH Hilo or Hawaii Community College. So you can, you can, you can go support that. So, Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you for indulging. So, so this is my Do you have time for questions or not? They would love
love to uh, uh, ask you a few questions. Okay, so if you ask questions, if you have a good question, then you will get something special. Oh, sir, you will get something special. It has to be a good question. Yeah, it has to be a good question. No, it's not how much I weigh, how old I am. Okay, yes, sir. Can you stand up and ask me your question? With a hoodie in the back, great hoodie. So, how did you get into real estate? Uh, when I was a senior in high school, by the way, I used to work at Kingfield yeah, until senior year. Until one girl from Honolulu told me, How can you work at Kingfield? I said, oh, I thought like that's where you work. I thought that's where you work. She said, Why don't you work in a clothing store? So, I, yeah, I went. So, I was working at Kurohara's. <laughs> And then the guy I worked with told me he was getting his real estate license. <laughs> so I asked him, hey, what? Is In other words, what is that? <laughs> See, I learned. What? So then I learned about that. And then I, I took it for that. So I, I, I did real estate when I was in college. And then after I graduated from college, I worked for someone who invested in commercial real estate. Commercial real estate, buying shopping centers, office buildings, hotels. And then after a while I said, I, I decided to do it on my own. Now, for anybody who says, I cannot do that. Because look at my upbringing, I'm my mom. I can tell you, I started buying buildings without anything, with zero. So I don't want anybody, one day if I bump into you, you tell me, ah. I like to do that, but I don't mind. I say, bull. Because you can't do it. You can do anything you want to do. So, you know what? There's some good questions. So, I give you two seats at San Francisco Giants tickets. I give you two, two tickets. And there you go. I get number of seats. You can get the older seats. So that's a good question. And 
I, you know, I, I, you, you giants really like courtside seats for all. You, I, you know, I'll give you two giant seats to the San Francisco yeah, Giants yeah, yeah. And you can use them you know, next year, the year after. Next year, they will be champions as well. So good year. <laughs> Okay, this is Muscle Horror, I made that. Everybody, thank you. Thank you.